Hey, good morning. Welcome back to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Today's project is this chair. It's oak. It's highly carved. I guess it's a Jacobean revival style, perhaps. I, I'm not sure. Jacobean uh, style furniture tends to be that real heavy, overly carved, kind of castle furniture look. I would assume because it's made out of oak and it looks the way it does that maybe it's turn of the century, a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Uh, I'm really not 100% sure. It is hand carved because if you look at the griffins on the top, they're a little bit different and as you compare carvings on both sides and things, you'll see that there, there's differences. The finish is in really good shape. The upholstery is in really good shape. The only problem is, is it's got a real bad case of the wiggles and because of the length of the back, when people lean back on that, they put an awful lot of torque on these joints. And fortunately, it doesn't look like it's ever been repaired because uh, these have a tendency to fall backwards. And when they do, they land up here and they wind up splitting, usually somewhere in the carvings around the turns or whatever. This one appears to be intact. So uh, what we're going to do here is just take it all apart. Hopefully there's not too many nails driven in the joints. And we will clean it up and re-glue it and move it on. So stick with us. I'll show you how we do it. I have the chair on the bench on its back. We'll start to look at these joints. And you can see that someone has tried to re-glue these using, fortunately, carpenter's glue. It didn't work because it wasn't obviously taken apart and glued inside the joint. They just probably tried to squeeze glue on the, uh, on the cheeks of the joints. And that will never hold. The other thing that you'll notice, there's the uh, oxidized wood of the uh, glue blocks. But the other thing that you'll notice is there's no screws holding the seat in. Now when we come up here, if I start to tap on that seat, if you can see down inside here, sorry if I'm giving you vertigo, but there's some glue and it looks like a strip of Velcro that's holding the seat down. So I would get the seat worked off of here and then I'll show you how it was attached. And the seat was just <clears throat> glued in. We'll come up with a, a, a solution for reattaching the seat. But what I think I'll try to do first is to uh, put some blocks across these corners. We can drill a hole through it and then we can drill into the seat rather than just glue it in. That would be the correct way to do it. I have the chair all marked so that I can remember how it goes back together. As I was marking this, I see there have been a number of repairs on this, as you would expect. There's nails in some of the joints, so we might be in for a real adventure here as we start to pull this apart. So let me get my heat gun and some wedges and my patience, and let's see if we can get this old girl apart. To bring you in on this first joint, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's two dowels that hold this front leg to this uh, seat assembly. And then attached to it, is this cross piece that's nailed in that's loose I've gotten it loose but I can't get that nail out and then attaching this unfortunately to this was another nail so what I did and it's just one of those things you can do when you have to is I put this heavy-duty scraper in here and gave it a whack with a hammer and that sheared off the nail in the joint I'll see if I stick my hand in there if you can see those you can see the two ends of the nail right there and that's going to enable me to pull this joint apart. So I think if we can get this loose, then I should be able to wiggle this loose enough to get this nail out of here and lift this one off of this stretcher, and then we'll be on our way. So let me put you back on, and here we go.
it was a cane seat at one time. Okay, a couple of things. When you pull off the chair assembly, as I showed you when I first got it off, we have the dowels that go into those holes right there. But if you look behind there under all that glue, you can see broken dowels. Two of them, in fact. But there is no matching dowel holes on the back leg assembly. So that means that either the leg or the seat assembly that we have isn't original to the chair, which is probably the case, or second, it was a piece from the factory that maybe was used in two different chairs, but that doesn't explain the fact for why the dowel joints are broken off. So I have to think that maybe this was not an original seat, but it sure does look like it belonged. If, if any of you have any ideas, let me know. But there is there is no indication there were ever dowels up there at all. Okay, second thing, this uh, back leg assembly or ladder assembly, it is very, very tight. We have just a hair's movement here, and right now it's, it's not showing any movement, but earlier I get about a degree out of it. And then up here, we have a very little bit of movement. You can see that little tiny space right there, and a little bit less on this side. The rest of this joint is tight. These joints are tight. These joints are tight, and not only are, are they tight, but on the back side of this one, we have a, a nail that's countersunk in. So what I'm going to do is just use some of this stuff. This is a chair brie wax. It's a special glue for uh, joints that allows you to get glue into the joint without taking the joint apart. And you can see here, you can inject it with a, a hypodermic syringe. And it penetrates and it's pretty strong. And it's not going to be structurally holding these joints together. It's just going to keep the very top of the joint tight because that's where the looseness is. Structurally, where the dowels go in, it's, it's still very tight. So we'll be fine with that. I think that's the right thing to do. We run the risk of damaging this back ladder assembly if we try to pull this all apart. There's no need to. So that's the way we're going to go. I've got the glue cleaned up off of these. I've got all sorts of glue cleanup to do. And then I'll get to uh, clamping or using the Brie Wax on this, clamping this up. We'll let this set aside and uh, we'll move forward from there. I have the uh, chair leg assembly or the ladder assembly, whatever you want to call it, held up with a uh, hand screw so it doesn't fall over. And then I've got my Brie Wax Chair RX penetrating chair glue loaded up in a glue applicator syringe. I've got a rag. And what I'm going to do is just squirt some of this right into this joint. This joint is, is really just so little movement in it. It's just, there we go. Nah, I just got it loose. All right. It's loose enough that I almost wish I could get it apart, but it's not in the cards. I'm working this down into the joint. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it is going down in there. And then push it back down. It's tight. And with a damp rag, I'll wipe off the excess. And I think that'll do what we need it to do.
do. Okay, I'm going to get the other four joints taken care of. By working these joints back and forth and open and closed, I was able to get enough room to slide that little knife in these joints and really, really spread this joint glue out. And applying it again, it's just a syringe glue applicator and we just lay it right in there and then because I'm able to get my my fist in there and spread this out a little bit I can work that glue down there and it's it's not only taking the the joint where the where the wood intersects it's also laying now on top of the uh, the dowels that are in there so that when we slide this together, we'll get some adhesion in the dowel joints that we didn't have before as well. But that's it. I mean, that's as far as I can get that joint apart. And that's, what, about a 32nd of an inch. But that'll be enough to keep this joint from having any movement in it, which is what we want. Okay, let me finish what I'm doing, and we'll clamp this up. Okay, we're all clamped up. We had really good glue, glue squeeze out the whole length of both joints. So I'm... Real optimistic that'll take care of any looseness that we have up here. Again, it wasn't structural looseness. It was just enough of a wiggle that it would be distracting. And then down here we've got, we're clamped up across that bottom stretcher that we glued. So we'll leave this set for a while, and then I'm going to get to work cleaning the, uh, the joints, the dowels, and the, uh, the holes in the rest of the chair. Clean up all the old glue squeezes and messes. And we'll be ready to put this back together once all the repairs set up. And while I was working on the seat frame assembly, I discovered a, a very, very large crack that I actually have it held open with a screwdriver right now. But it goes all the way through the front rail along the rabbit where the spline for the cane seat was all the way down to here. And we have to fix that. Now, this, this break is clearly old because as I was cleaning it out there's a lot of oxidized material that came out of there. It's been open for a long time and since it's an irregular break what I've decided to do is use epoxy on this. So I mixed up some West System epoxy. I put in some filler which thickens it up and then I put in some perfect brown color so it won't so it'll blend in with the, uh, the wood that's there. So And we've got that crack all back together now. You can see we've got it clamped. And you really even can't see the joint where it's cracked there. And then that corner is pulled back together. So we'll let that set overnight and set up. We still have to clean out and clean up all these joints clean out the holes and clean off the dowels, clean up the glue, take care of the nails that, have, that are still in there, as you can see, and then look at the age of that nail right there, I wonder, oh there it is right there, where it went in, we'll back that out, and then we will uh, get this put back together, but that's going to be it for today, I've got some other things I have to do, my lovely bride needs me, so I will bring you back to the shop tomorrow and we'll finish this chair off. Good morning. It's the next day. It's a little foggy and a little damp here in North Georgia. Let's get in the shop and see how we did. Well, this was the split to the seat that, as you remember, went all the way through. And that came together very, very well. And you can't even see where the seam is, so I'm real happy with that.
underside of the seat assembly and what I'm looking to accomplish is to put some braces across each corner so that I can drill a hole and run a screw into the seat. Remember the seat is on top of this seat assembly so this isn't holding the seat in it's only holding the seat down it's really acting almost like a washer to hold it down just so the seat doesn't fall off there's it's not structurally involved and what I'm thinking of doing is taking a piece of wood not this one in particular it's just one I found uh, laying in the shop but running it across from here to about here and from here to about here and then drilling a hole in it I look through my uh, my wood that I have and I've got this old piece of white oak that's been laying around the shop for years and there's even some funky areas in here and I think what I'll do is run this through the table saw come up with uh, some strips about seven inches long and about uh, an inch or an inch and a half wide and uh, we'll get those milled up right now So this is what I came up with. I just uh, took that white oak, ripped it into one inch strips, cut 45s on each end, and set them in here. Uh, one of the critical things we had to remember was the way this seat is constructed, that this area from here back has to be uh, free of these or there would be an obstruction. It wouldn't sit on the rail. So we've got that taken care of. So I'm just going to uh, put a little bit of color on these so they don't look quite so obvious. I'm just going to put a dab of glue and a single single nail on these to hold them. There's no reason for me to, to screw them down because the force is not going to be pushing them down. And then uh, we'll drill a single hole in the center of each of these, countersink it, and that'll be how we attach the seat from up underneath onto this. So let me get on with that. Here's the finished seat mounting brackets. I've got them colored so they look like they're old and they're in there. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Let's move forward. I had some very, very hard uh, glue drips down on this round turning here and I was really struggling to get them off and what I wound up doing is taking some distilled vinegar which apparently will soften PVA glue and this scrubby pad it's a 3M red whatever grit that is I can't ever remember and it's been coming off I tried to take this off with a with a chisel and I tried to pick it off with a knife and all sorts of things and I just don't want to damage the wood but uh, yeah this vinegar seems to be softening it up and taking it off so another tip for you we have the chair all dry assembled and uh, we're pretty much ready to start the glue up most of the joints are tight where I don't feel I need to use any epoxy I may mix up some epoxy just to have it on hand in case I find a joint that uh, gives us any problems. This decorative cross piece here just lays on these legs and had been nailed in from above with three very rusty nails that I could not get out. And rather than trying to re-nail this, what I'm going to do is using some epoxy with some filler and some clamps, I'm going to glue this or epoxy this to this seat bottom and then this joint here won't be supporting the whole thing and you see we've got a little damage there we're going to have to fix but we've got some touch-ups finished touch-ups to do once we get this glued up but that's the next step we're going to uh, we're going to glue this baby up
when we first got involved with this chair, this had been nailed in. And when we put the chair back together, uh, rather because these nails rusted and broke off, rather than driving nails through the front of this chair, what we chose to do was epoxy this. The reason we chose epoxy is we could mix in some uh, filler with it, thicken it up, and it would fill in any voids. And right now it is in nice and tight. It's clamped up because of the angles cut into these pieces as you're tight against both of the legs, the splay of both of the legs, and it's looking really good. So I'm real happy with that. The glue up on the rest of the chair came out great. We've got a band clamp across the bottom to pull these legs tight into here. We've got clamps across the apron. You can see how nice and tight that joint is. It's actually still squeezing out glue. i got to clean that up. And we've got these joints all down nice and tight. Of course, this has all been re-glued. So this is nice and tight. And this chair should be rock solid when it when all the glue dries. But you can see that all of our joints are looking good. Okay, our glue up is done. You can see we have three clamps on that piece that we epoxied in. All the legs are flat on the floor, nice and square. We've got the a broken anvil putting weight down on the chair to keep everything nice and tight. And as you remember, we made the repairs to the upper part of this without disassembling it, and it's nice and tight. And all of the work that we did on the other joints has come to fruition, and they're all jointed, glued, and pulled nice and tight in the chair square. So there we go. Let's leave this uh, to set up overnight. And the next step on this is going to be color touch-ups and waxing and reinstalling the seat. And we'll be done with this old girl. So, so far so good. Well, hey, good morning. It's another dreary but warm day here in North Georgia. Let's go in the shop, get this thing unclamped, get it uh, cleaned up, waxed up, and the seat back on. And let's get it out of here. Well, there she is in all her glory. She's rock solid. Looks pretty good. So let's get her up on the bench. Let's get the touch-ups taken care of. And then we'll move on to waxing and uh, putting the seat back on. I've got a little golden oak dye stain. Let's see how that does. Hopefully you're staying in focus. I'm just going to try to pull this light area a little bit better into the rest of the leg color. That's looking good. Let's see how we do on this torn wood here. I don't think we have to fill this in. I think that's going to look fine right the way it is. I think the fill would make it look worse. Now any place where it's not going to take the dye, we can just use some pigments. And, uh, and darken it with pigments, but even where the uh, glue had been spilled by the in the prior restoration, it looks like it's taken the, the dye stain, okay. And we'll model this up a little bit so it blends.
Looks pretty good. I think that'll do. Okay, I'm going to go through and do uh, whatever touch-ups need to be done, and then I'll bring you back. I'm going to use a colored wax on this. I'd like to highlight the carvings as best I can. Uh, I've had good luck with the uh, fitties. This is uh, color is rugger brown. The only problem is I don't have very much left, and it's real annoying trying to dab uh, the brush in there. So what I what I do when I'm running low is I just add some naphtha to the wax, and I'll stir it up, and it makes kind of like a liquid wax that I can dab on with a brush and then the nappa flashes off and then I can just bump it from there. So let me get this mixed up and we'll get this applied. In order to speed this up a little bit I created a little bit of a double boiler here with my hot plate and uh, pot with water in it. Obviously you know, <laughs> no open flames here because naphtha is nothing more than a lighter fluid. And uh, by heating up the wax uh, we've liquefied this a whole lot faster. And what I'm going to do is use this chip brush, just dip it in our wax mixture, and paint on a, a light coat. You can see it pretty much dries almost instantly. And then we'll buff it off, and the dark. and the dark wax will stay. In the recesses. So there we go. I got a lot of work to do. Let's see, bring in, show you what that looks like. You can see what a nice rich look this dark wax gives this chair. I thinned the, uh, the wax mixture out just a little bit more with some more uh, naphtha so it wasn't uh, drying so quickly and it wasn't quite so much wax in one spot um, and it's working much better. The first time I ever saw this technique used was on a YouTube channel Ross Taylor Woodworks. Uh, Ross does a real nice job with his channel and I suggest that you go over there and check him out. He does a lot of real nice uh, restorations on, uh, on furniture. He also does some some picking too, but this has given this chair a really, 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 really nice look. So I'm going to continue. I've still got that gigantic back to handle, but I'll bring you back. And if anybody's interested, this is what the solution looks like. It's uh, it's pretty watery. working this melted wax mixture into all of the crevices using the tips of the tip of the brush. I want to make sure that we highlight the best we can all these carvings. And to do that, put the darkness on the chair and wipe it off the high spots. And it will highlight the carvings. This technique is working out very, very well. If you're going to try this at home, I would suggest that you uh, soften your wax in a double boiler, not over an open flame, over an electric flame uh, first, and then take it away from the heat and add your naphtha. That would probably be the safest way of, uh, of accomplishing this unlike what I did. What do you think? I like it a lot. Well, I think that wax did exactly what we wanted it to do. Got a nice, warm finish. And our carvings are highlighted. The chair looks old. 
and well cared for. Let's get the seat on and finish this up. As you remember, this seat was initially glued fabric to wood to the chair. It's a replacement seat, we know that. So the question becomes exactly where does it go? And when I do these, I usually just do these by eye. I put it in a place that looks good to me. And then I'll take measurements to make sure that we have our equidistant. So we're about an inch there and an inch there. About an inch and a quarter there. About an inch and an eighth. Inch and an eighth. Inch and three quarters. And about an inch and three quarters there. So that that should be it. And then step back and look at it. That's the most important thing. Does it look nice? Once you've got it where it is, clamp it down with some soft clamps. Then you can flip the chair over and run the screws in. And the seat's mounted. You can see how our uh, the braces that we built work. We ran the screws up through the bit of the base of the seat. So there we go. Well, here she is, all done. Got a new lease on life. It's as strong as can be, rock solid. It's been re-waxed. Got the seat attached properly, and it's ready for another 100 years of use. In this video, we covered three different types of adhesives and why we use them. We used regular wood glue. We used epoxy when we needed to uh, fill uh, uneven joints. And finally, we used that Brewax Chair RX for the joints that we couldn't get apart but to tighten them up. We also highlighted a new way of waxing. And again, credit to uh, Ross Taylor Woodworks for that. Basically, we warmed up the colored wax. We added some naphtha, stirred it up. It went on like a thin paint, and it was able to drive the wax up into all the little recesses, wipe it off. It looks great. So listen, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards. Thanks for watching. Take good care. We'll see you next video. Bye.